so i wouldn't be taking too much of time i just wish to say one thing about professor joseph john that uh, you know while we are making these posters i had this brief interaction with him and i told him that uh, sir if i need something special i'll be asking you and he said yes you are sure you can ask me and then this brain wave click that you know why can't i have a picture of him holding all these optical fibers with him and uh, since it's the festival season and uh, the diwali just around the corner i thought it would be a good way to uh, do this and uh, you, you won't believe me it's one of the most humbling experiences of my life and i messaged him at around 10 in the night saying sir i have an idea and would you be okay to do photographs and uh, the photo session went on till 12 in the night and he wouldn't you know give it give it up till i was satisfied that i've got the best picture that i had in mind so thank you so much sir for that wonderful uh, humbleness in showing me that you know it doesn't matter uh, how great you are if an idea has to work he's always with you and with that it's my extreme pleasure again to welcome professor joseph john to deliver his master class session five over to you sir stage is yours thank you very much uh, papan uh, let me first of all say that i am extremely honored uh, to have this uh, uh, lecture to my own uh, ctns seniors classmates batch mates and my uh, junior ctns and i am extremely honored let me go to my let me just share the screen and uh, start the i hope i am uh, visible yeah it, i hope it's visible yeah yes please go okay thank you so the uh, topic we have taken the seminar topic is uh, optical fiber communication illuminating the world now i am reminded of uh, my own days when i was in cet or uh, those of us may be remembering those were the days we had this old uh, black telephones bulky telephones not only that all telephone lines used to run by the side of the road and i also have seen a uh, post office sending telegram and if you wanted a telegram to be sent fast then you need to go to the telegraph office uh, you know the teleprinter so these were those were the days and all of them you can see have disappeared now today there are two major technologies which are responsible for the information or the mobile age we are in now when we buy a mobile phone now we always the each mobile company would advertise their uh, processors so the best uh, smartphone or the mobile or the laptop processors are all possible because of the vlsi technology very large scale integration technology there are millions of transistors which are put in a chip and uh, this is one of the uh, most important technologies similarly the other technology which made the information age or the mobile age possible is the optical fiber communication technology which made possible our uh, 4g or your earlier 3g and we are about to get into 5g and later into 6g all these the internet speeds we have seen that over the years it has gone very fast compared to the 10 or 15 years all this is because of optical fiber technology so today my purpose is to take you through a walk through give you a story of uh, how where where did it start and where are we now now i want to just give you some background as to the major milestones in electrical communication now in 1838 samuel morse invented telegraphy so that's how we talk about uh, morse code and uh, that's the way people communicated till 1876 when alexander graham bell came up with the uh, telephone 
which we all use today. Now, uh, we can be very proud as Indians because uh, uh, J.C. Bose in 1898 invented and demonstrated in Calcutta a 40 gigahertz wireless transmission. He was well ahead of uh, others, well ahead. Now, the next major electrical communication we can think of uh, is about 1940 when the first coaxial cable system, uh, coaxial cable would mean that you have a, a, a copper cable in the middle and uh, it's uh, we would have seen it in our houses, uh, Tata Sky or other cables coming. So they are the, uh, the kind of coaxial cable and the kind of uh, uh, the analog, it was an analog uh, and about three megahertz equivalent to about 3000 voice channels. So this is about 1940. Now 1948 is an extremely important year because that's the year when Claude Shannon came up with a fantastic uh, paper and he laid the foundation for digital communication. So today, all that we do are uh, digital. You know, we have gone back, we've gone from analog to the digital age. And uh, so Claude Shannon's paper uh, in 1948 kind of delayed the initial mathematical foundation for digital communication. Now, uh, 1948 came the first microwave system, you know, four gigahertz. And India happens to be the country with the maximum uh, microwave links even in the world. Now, the advanced coaxial digital telephone system. So, mind you, uh, when the first time coaxial cable was shown, it was 1940, it was analog. But the most advanced digital system came in 1975. That was about 275 megabit, and uh, that's what that that's a kind of maximum uh, people could achieve. Now, before we go to the advantages of fibers, we need to appreciate what were the challenges of those days. Now, let's take an example of uh, connecting Mumbai to Pune the kind of the trunk line it's let's take the distance is about uh, 200 kilometers now digital uh, our our phone our landline phone uh, the kind of bandwidth we have is about four kilohertz so digital means you would sample it at twice the uh, rate which will be eight uh, kilohertz and uh, that you will convert into an eight bit using an analog to digital converter so you get a 64 kilobits per second. That's the kind of starting rate. Now, if you combine 32 such channels, uh, which is what, what they kind of call the digital hierarchy, then 32 times 64 comes to 2.048 megabit. In India, today, all telephone companies, you can ask them for this E1. Then E1 would stand for a data pipe of uh, roughly 2 Mbps or megabit per second. So this kind of a system, uh, the problem was you needed a repeater every two kilometers because the attenuation of the coaxial cable is very high. It's 20 dB per kilometer, which means you need 100 repeaters between Mumbai and Pune. Now, the problem is uh, after about roughly about five repeaters, your signal would be so bad that the, you need to regenerate the initial signal. So you need about 40 manned repeater stations where this regeneration and uh, retransmission is done. And uh, therefore, you can think of just between Pune and to have a digital link of uh, 2 Mbps, it was too expensive and also too unreliable. Why? Because there are too many repeaters. So this was the kind of scenario let's say in the kind of the 70s or the even in the early 80s in India. So what are the problems of electrical communication systems? Now they are affected by what is called the EMI or electromagnetic interference. So any uh, any spark or anything you know would, would affect it. And the bandwidths were very low, high system cost. We saw it just now and uh, very high attenuation and they are bulky. And another very major problem, they are prone to tapping. And these were the problems. What you see on the right side top is a kind of typical cable you would see even today from our premises to the exchange. They use this kind of cables. And what you see bottom right side is the coaxial cable, typical coaxial cable they would use for the kind of communication I'm talking about. Now, 
here comes optical fiber communication now 1966 there was a research paper written by professor charles keo and uh, his colleague uh, george hockham now they people were people knew that the solution is uh, optical but uh, people were trying many things one of the biggest problem those days was the fiber which was made those days were made with our kind of window pane you know glass and those glasses had very high attenuation typically something like 500 db per kilometer very high db by the way is uh, 10 log p2 by p1 it's kind of a way by which you we, we decibels we, we use very commonly so they in this particular paper they proposed that silica glass as the a suitable material and uh, also they said if you do the they also analyze and and, and uh, identified the impurities and they challenged the scientists to explore this further and uh, charles keo uh, charles keo had to go around the world convincing people and 1970 corning glass came up with the first fiber and that had an attenuation of 20 db per kilometer now this number is very important because that was the attenuation of a coaxial cable so so once you a fiber was made with an attenuation of 20 db per kilometer it was known that fiber optics is possible so essentially what is a fiber an optical fiber is uh, a, a kind of a cylindrical a kind of a glass mind you it's not hollow it's basically made of glass and that structure has a the center portion which is called the core has slightly more refract index than the outer portion which is called the cladding and when light is uh, put on the one side light uh, goes through the fiber because of total internal reflection we'll see this in detail so what we see here is the kind of uh, the technique which corning glass used in 1970 which is called the outside vapor deposition method now similar method and slightly uh, better methods are used today to get the best fibers so but this is a, a vapor deposition technique which uh, corning used now in 9, 2009 professor charles keo was awarded nobel prize in physics for uh, transmission of light in fiber op- for optical communication so by then 2009 it was understood that uh, uh, you know this optical fiber technology is one major technology which has uh, revolutionized the whole world so he was in recognition he was given the nobel prize in physics now what are the advantages of optical fiber communication or sometimes called fiber optics very high bandwidth much much greater than today fibers are much we'll see that later much greater than 500 gigahertz giga is 10 to the power 9 greater than 500 gigahertz and uh, very low attenuation the lowest attenuation today you have is about 0.16 db per kilometer now compare this with the corning glass which is 20 db per kilometer you know a massive improvement and they are immune to emi electromagnetic interference why because the whole uh, the signal is going as light so therefore and uh, and the glass is an insulator so there is no way uh, you know a spark can uh, interfere with the signal the other very important thing is data security it almost impossible to tap information from a fiber it's possible but extremely difficult and the system cost is so low because there are very few repeaters which are there and also the size very very small we'll see some of these dimensions now and very low weight all this were great advantages and today Uh, you know the kind of uh, bit rates available are much better than 10 to the power minus 10 which is too good with the coaxial system the kind of uh, numbers you had was 10 to the power minus 3 and uh, today easily you can get the 10 to the power minus 10 which means one error when you send 10 to the power 10 bits and which easily you know can be corrected uh, in today's uh, kind of uh, error correcting and other techniques now let's come to the basics of optical fiber communication so what is done is you would take your electrical signal you would put at the input and it goes to a transmitter which uh, basically uh, is 
essentially electrical to optical conversion happens there and uh, then that uh, optical signal is put into an optical fiber and then that uh, fiber will carry that light all the way through and at the receiving end that op that optical intensity is converted into an electrical signal at the receiver and finally you get your signal back so that's the kind of basics now what we are seeing here is what are the kind of devices which are used for this conversion now at the transmitting end you would use either a laser diode or an led now a laser diode we all would have seen our laser pointers and we see how kind of sharp the light is an led also we are familiar because all our gadgets today have leds now leds are used but very sparingly very small links they are used but for all communication purposes you would use a laser and the laser has two advantages one thing is the light intensity is very high secondly it has a extremely narrow spectral width meaning the wavelength of light would be very very narrow and uh, whereas led the wavelength spread would be quite large at the so your fiber you will have a fiber depending on the application you might if indoor application you might use a a kind of a, a, a simple cable if it's an outdoor application you would go for an armored cable we'll see some of this uh, uh, soon now at the receiving end to convert the optical signal to electrical signal you would use what is called a pin photodiode which is a a a, 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 a pn junction with a intrinsic layer in the middle or what is called an avalanche photodiode which also has uh, some amount of uh, optical amplification inside uh, because of the gain now what we are showing here what i'm showing here on this slide is the basic uh, uh, operation of uh, light transmission in an optical fiber first of all remember the fiber is not hollow it's a solid core and the the middle portion has slightly more refract index than the outer portion now let's see the uh, the 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 uh, how light gets uh, uh, you know, transmitted through the fiber. Now, from our physics, which we have studied in high school, we know that uh, when light, uh, you know, goes from uh, uh, the rare medium into a denser medium, the, you know, uh, we know that it bends towards the normal. So, let's take this particular light, the ray A, which is the kind of the extreme one. So, you can see that the, the ray comes and it, it bends towards the normal. Now, what happens is at the as it goes it uh, comes to the bound, boundary between the core and the cladding and the cladding has less refract index than the core now depending on the refract index of these two we know about snell's law and also we know about critical angle so there is a particular critical angle so if this light uh, uh, hits at an angle more than the critical angle then that light gets totally internally reflected so that's what is going to happen for all the rays which are going to fall within this particular cone here. Now consider this ray B, which is outside the core, outside this cone of light. What would happen? That particular ray would uh, first get uh, refracted, and then at the next boundary, what happens is the uh, the angle will be less than the critical angle. Therefore, that gets refracted out and it's lost so this explains kind of the uh, you know one simple way physically how light gets coupled now very important to realize that the refract index differences we are talking about are so small so if you with a naked eye if you look at a fiber you will not be able to figure out where is the core where is the cladding so in a, a typical a multi-mode fiber has a refract index of the core would be about 1.5 and the cladding will be about 1.48 and what is called the numerical aperture which is square root of n1 square minus n2 square would tell you roughly what is the kind of uh, the the conical half angle so for this values this angle is going to be about 14 degrees which means the full angle is about 28 degrees so which means light falling within that 28 degrees only would go through the rest of the light will be lost I we have a, a small demonstration here just to show you how light gets uh, coupled and uh, what I'm using is uh, some of this uh, 
the fiber bundle which we might have at home as a, a kind of a showpiece and also we would also see light uh, being coupled into fiber uh, using an led and a laser uh, so we will we will have a a small demonstration now So I hope uh, this, this uh, is, yeah, listen. I have with me video. is a fiber bundle which we use for home decoration. And you can see that, uh, so what I've done, I put a torch at the end so that light gets coupled into this glass bundle. And you can see that all the light comes through the fiber at the end. And it's most important to notice that these are solid core glass fibers, maybe about 200 or about 300 of them. And there is no light coming in between, except some uh, light kind of, otherwise no light is leaking. And all the light is coming at the end. It's very important to notice this. So this can be explained because light get coupled at the uh, end of the fiber and it gets totally internally reflected and reaches the other end. So this explains how light goes through an optical fiber. This a uh, simple way of explaining how light goes through a fiber. And very important to notice the fiber is not hollow. It has a core and a cladding. So this particular glass fiber, the central portion would have slightly more refract index than the outer portion. And that's what causes total internal reflection. Now what I'll do is I would use the same bundle and I'll put light coming from uh, three LEDs. I have a, a light coming now from an yellow LED, light now coming from a blue LED, and now light coming from a red LED. So at home, what this particular decoration piece, what it does is, they have a lamp at the bottom, you might have seen, and a motor, and uh, they have put a color filters they put it there and the one as the motor rotates different colors colors get light gets coupled in the fiber and you get different color so this is just to illustrate how an optical fiber works now i'll use a plastic fiber which is uh, one which is one millimeter uh, in diameter and therefore the light which you can see will be much more i'll put some light at one end and you can see the light is quite intense. So this plastic fiber is used these days for home networking. And uh, I'm told that uh, uh, Reliance and others are in installing this in Navi Mumbai also. And uh, this is used to, and it's a very flexible. And uh, for short lengths up to about 50 meter or 100 meter, these fibers can be used for home networking. And you can get at least 100 Mbps or 200 Mbps. Uh, within home yeah what I'll do now I would use a much longer uh, fiber of uh, plastic fiber of uh, 15 meters and it'll put the same light and the intensity will be less but it may be difficult to figure out when you look at the light intensity what I want to do now is to use the same plastic fiber for coupling light in from LED and uh, right now let me put the light coming from a red LED and now let me put it light coming from a, an yellow LED and finally the light coming from the blue LED. So this illustrates how light goes through and you can also see different wavelengths. Now instead of 
an LED, if I use a laser diode, you would see that the light intensity will be much more, much, much more. So lasers, therefore, are used when you want much longer, uh, longer link lengths. Now, I would, uh, I want to finally show an LED going on and off and uh, how the light gets coupled into the fiber and reaches the other end. So you can think of this as equivalent uh, to how you send data through a fiber. See, the LED or the laser diode would go on and off and the corresponding light, whether it's LED or laser, would reach the other end. And the other end, you would put a photo detector which would uh, convert this into an electrical signal. So this just to illustrate kind of the proof of concept as to how light goes through a fiber. Finally, I want to show a ribbon type of a cable which has 12 fibers, single mode fibers. And those fibers, uh, the outer dimension would be 125 and plus with some buffer, it may be about 200 uh, micrometer or 0.2 mm. Why I am showing this particular ribbon type of a, a fiber uh, with this 12 fibers kind of kept side by side and they have kind of put a plastic cover over it. This is very popular these days and you would see that the cable photographs which I will show you later, all of them have uh, these uh, ribbon fibers put inside because it is very easy to handle them and there are 12 fibers which are there. Uh, altogether there are 12 fibers, different colors, you identify them through different colors. We'll go back to yeah. So I hope uh, I'm. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll continue with our yeah. So uh, so you had an idea about how light gets coupled. So when we talk about, I made this uh, statement: multi-mode fibers, single-mode fibers. So multi-mode fiber would mean that the core dimension is much larger than the single mode fiber, the core dimension is smaller. In a single mode fiber which is used for telecommunication, this dimension is about 10 micrometer as opposed to about 50 to 60 micrometer uh, for the multi-mode fiber. So for, for all telecommunication application, you would use single mode fiber. Now, the typical kind of dimensions are shown here. Single mode fiber, the outer dimension of both of them would be about 125 micrometer, but the core dimensions are different. And uh, th uh, that uh, differentiates. So multi-mode fiber core would be uh, either most of the commonly used 50 micrometer or 62 micrometer. The one I showed you plastic fiber, that's a very different category, but uh, not used for kind of long networks. Now, this graph is very important to appreciate uh, the developments of optical fiber. So, initially, uh, when the fibers were made, we talked about those 20 dB per kilometer which Corning made. So, that was basically at the, what is called the first window, which is called the 850 nanometer window. So, there are three windows which are used for communication in an optical fiber. Initially, people use this first window, which is around 850 nanometer, which is slightly outside our visible region. So it's uh, just the beginning of infrared. And the second window has a big advantage because that window is around 1300 uh, nanometer, but 1310 uh, nanometer, what is called the material dispersion is zero. So therefore bandwidth is very high. At the, so that's why this band is very popular. And then today all telecommunication fibers would use this particular third window which has the lowest loss. When, so when we talked about 0.16 dB per kilometer, we use that. So what we have here is the, the photograph of all the kind of typical, some cables, just to give you a feel of it. Now this Reliance cable, which is the orange color here, it has 96 fibers inside. I showed you that uh, the bundle fiber earlier. So basically what they've done is, this bundle has 12 fibers and uh, they have these loose tubes here 
around four tubes. Each tube has two such bundles. So 24, uh, uh, you know, you have in a one tube into four, 96. So important thing to notice here is that each of these fibers have a capacity much greater than one terabit per, per second. One terabit is 10 to the power 12. Interestingly, the cost of single mode fiber, this best fiber is only 500 rupees a kilometer. It is that cheap. So you would use different types of cables for different applications. Now, this, this particular one you see in the middle, they have put a, a kind of a, an, an a iron kind of a string here in the middle. This is for aerial. Uh, you might have seen sometimes when you go to hill stations, they put fibers. So that kind of, so different applications have different kind of design. The one you see on the extreme left is very interesting. This is was used in uh, by army, uh, you know, in the Rajasthan deserts. And uh, a tank can go over it. They have armor, armoring and nothing will happen. And for army is very important. These 24 fibers which you see are right in the middle. But there are fibers which you, I hope you can see. Those fibers are put there uh, in case somebody tries to tap to figure out where somebody is tapping any information or not. Now, the early days of fiber optics, uh, uh, they used uh, what is called the first generation systems, which we saw. Uh, they used 850 nanometer systems and uh, uh, the data rates were kind of quite low, 100 Mbps. Second generation used the 1300 nanometer systems, single mode fibers, and the data rates went up all the way to about 1.7 Gbps. And the third generation used uh, 1550, which has the lowest uh, fiber loss and uh, data rates went up even further and the repeated spacings also increased. Now, what we have is a very simple example just to illustrate the advantage of an optical fiber solution. So we took earlier the example of uh, Mumbai Pune trunk line and uh, this E1 or 2.048 Mbps and a link length of 200 kilometers. Earlier we saw that you needed uh, 100 repeaters with coaxial cable. Now let's talk about the, the, the first generation LED based system, which is a very, very old system. Even with that, the repeater spacing is 5 kilometers. Number of repeaters, you need 40, manned repeaters are 8. eight. But if you use a laser diode system and the second generation, repeater spacing jumps to 50 kilometers approximately and the number of repeaters is four therefore you don't need any manned repeaters so now you see immediately the advantages you get now the kind of uh, sample uh, uh, optical fiber communication systems you have uh, between 1980 and 1992 are shown here uh, so uh, you know, you can see that initially they were using multi-mode uh, systems and uh, whereas uh, by the time about 1992, single mode systems and the repeated spacing uh, increased very high. Now, uh, very important that uh, now we already appreciated the advantages of optical fibers that uh, you don't have uh, electromagnetic interference, you have uh, uh, very low loss, very high bandwidth. And also, we have seen that uh, uh, you know, the, the system cost is very low because the repeaters are low. Now, post 90, something very interesting happened. You might all remember that internet came some sometime around in the early 90s. By late 90s, there was a huge need for internet bandwidth. Now, uh, somewhere in the mid 90s, two technologies uh, almost got uh, commercialized. One is what is called wavelength division multiplexing, which means through the same fiber, you can send multiple wavelengths. You remember I showed you different colors. Uh, so something equivalent to that, except that these wavelengths are very close. For example, you might use a 1300 nanometer window and the they will all be using laser diodes and they are all very close to each other. When you use that, such kind of a system is what is called a dense WDM, uh, which meaning dense wavelength diffusion multiplexing but if you want to use let's say larger separations in wavelengths you also might go for what is called coarse wdm or cwdm another technology which came uh, handy in the mid 90s was optical amplifiers we saw that even without optical amplifiers 
you could uh, have much better repeater spacing now optical amplifiers gave you the advantage that you don't repeaters you don't need any conversion from optical to electrical at all the signal gets amplified optically itself these two technologies pushed fiber optics to very high data rates and the capacity which we have today now let's look at uh, the fiber amplifiers the ones which are used today are called erbium doped fiber amplifiers erbium is a rare earth material so what is done is you would have a short length of fiber which you would uh, dope with erbium and uh, then what you would do is you would uh, uh, put what is called a pump a laser source so your signal will be coming let's say the signal is very weak and the signal comes in and uh, you would couple another light 980 nanometer and that is just a, a, a you know what happens is the photon energy which you have at 980 nanometer which my much higher than the the photon energy you have at 15 15 nanometer so what happens as these two lights go together through the fiber they interact and they there would be optical amplification happening and uh, this pushed the range of uh, uh, repeater spacing much 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 higher now so therefore fiber today all our trunk lines use optical amplifiers and dwdf or dense wd these two put together has given you the capacity now in the 90s in our country you now we used to talk about 2.5 gigabit systems into about 10 such wavelengths so altogether you could get about at least 25 gigabit by the time 2000 in the early 2000s people were not happy because the data rate requirement kept on increasing so therefore in our country also all telecom companies especially bsnl and mtnl they started working on 10 gbps reliance also they started working on 10 gbps systems with 40 or more wavelengths so that would give you straight away from one fiber 400 gbps and uh, uh, we know uh, the data requirements have increased uh, almost exponentially so last let's say the last five years or so now in our country all trunk routes and within let's say mumbai you have uh, 40 gbps between two exchanges 40 gbps with 20 more wavelengths or more that's the kind of systems we are talking about today i put here in this table a kind of a sample of the ofc systems or optical fiber systems you have since 1995 so you can see how the data rates have increased from one terabit per second to the latest one this year Haradi uh, and uh, Huawei together in uh, uh, international conference in the United States this year in, in January they uh, reported this and experimentally they did 80 uh, DWDM and 400 G of which means 32 uh, terabits and they they had a link length of 640 kilometers so that's the kind of systems we are talking about today now something very hot just this month IEEE spectrum which is the they have reported a very interesting story which also came in the kind of uh, uh, in the what is the IEEE journal watch in the university college london the, they were able to transmit 178 terabit per second through one fiber. This is equivalent to 100 million Zoom sessions or one single fiber. So that's the kind of capacity we are talking about today. Unimaginable. It's so high. Now, let's come to the next uh, real engineering challenge. Now, how do you connect the continents? Today, we, I'm sure all of us would have seen that the kind of uh, uh, you know the telephone calls which we make uh, are very very fast and uh, you are able to get connected very fast and very clear signals why is it possible now one of this is one of the biggest engineering challenges because between the continents the distance you are talking about say atlantic is anywhere between 6000 to 8000 kilometers and uh, you have to bury the cable in sea and uh, you that that particular cable should have both power and fiber and think about these fibers being laid about one kilometer or more down in the ocean bed therefore the water pressure is extremely high 
so it has to be armored and on the top of that something very interesting you have shark attacks and uh, and mind you your repeaters are all housed inside this cable so in uh, 2006 this kind of numbers we had was about uh, uh, you know extremely high you know the uh, total of about 420,000 kilometers of fiber uh, over 100 undersea fiber optic systems. That was a kind of uh, scenario. Now, this is a real engineering challenge. And you can see that our country also is connected with Bombay, uh, Cochin, Chennai, uh, and also Calcutta. We have this, uh, uh, you know, the submarine cable landings. This is a very interesting picture. Now, one of the biggest enemy of these un uh, undersea cables or submarine cables are shark. You can see here, this is actually a, a real video taken, a shark attacking the cable. And you would wonder why. And I was reading today a, a technical article. What they said is some of these cables which we were using, now the voltages going through this, the, this particular composite cable is so high that when sharks go near these cables, they get some kind of a shock. So they consider these cables as enemies. So they bite them. In the process, they both damage the cable and they die. So this is a one of the biggest challenge in this undersea cables. Now the kind of, again, some sample of undersea cables, which are used for transmission experiments all the way back from 1988, which was the first uh, transatlantic cable. Mind you, way back in 1866, itself the first uh, transatlantic cable was laid for telegraph between uh, europe and uh, new york and uh, that particular cable was uh, chewed by uh, shark in two weeks time but since then they have learned a lot of lessons so this was the t88 was the first uh, uh, optical fiber undersea cable uh, so and it this first time they put uh, a fiber and you can see that the technology was uh, old, but uh, what is more important is the reliability. And coming to that, uh, this year, 2020, now the kind of uh, uh, the what is reported is kind of uh, 24,000 gigabit or 24 terabit and a distance of uh, 6,000 plus kilometers. So a huge amount of um, cables are being laid almost every day. Again, another very interesting news. The uh, two years ago, this uh, news was reported you know a transatlantic cable was laid between Hong Kong and uh, Los Angeles and the kind of capacity that it had was 144,000 gigabit or 144 terabits per second and uh, this is one of the uh, kind of uh, and the distance is 13,000 kilometers so you can think of the kind of uh, you know the engineering uh, you know task and uh, is very very interesting in the engineering challenge and uh, it's so nice that these are all working that's why we get our internets and our telephone calls so clearly now coming to uh, the next one uh, ram in effect what has it do to optical fiber communication as you would know sir cv raman was awarded nobel prize in physics in 1930 for ram in effect now ram in effect is used in optical fiber communication for a very interesting application. So, uh, Raman scattering, it, uh, it basically, it does uh, inelastic scattering of uh, photons by matter. So, as the uh, light goes through, uh, uh, you know, any material, in, in our case, a fiber, you now they, it gets scattered and the exchange of energy takes place between just like the case of EDFA or the erbium dope amplifier here also uh, happens. So this is used in what are called Raman amplifiers in uh, dense WDM long haul systems. Now, what happens is uh, the the technique which is used is what is called stimulated Raman scattering. And that would happen when you put a very large amount of power into an optical fiber. And uh, this is well suited for long haul or ultra long haul application, which are submarine. The thing is, this is slightly more expensive, but you could use uh, the existing fiber itself and you can put this, uh, you know, uh, the Raman amplifiers is, can be very easily installed. So wherever you have very long haul applications, you would go for 
RAM and amplifiers. Now, looking at the world scenario, we have about a 7% uh, year on year increase in fiber kilometers laid since 2002. In 2018 alone, 500 million fiber kilometers were laid all over the world. Something very interesting is uh, in 2019, last year, you know, 480 uh, million fiber kilometers or equivalent to 12,000 times around the earth, that much of fiber was laid just last year alone. Now, you might ask this question, why so much of fiber is laid every year? Now, the answer is earlier when we talked about the 70s or the early 80s, the only need you had was voice calls. But today, our needs are not just voice calls, but we, uh, you know, you have, uh, you, you know, the video streaming, you have uh, data, file download, all this, uh, you know, the kind of you need huge amount of data. So the that's why you the needs are increasing every day. Now, this is exactly where, uh, you know, one of the latest uh, or rather uh, what is called the fiber to the home is is what is being uh, talked about all over the world and every in our country also, especially right in Bombay and all metro cities, FTTH or fiber to the home is what is talked about. So what do you what do you do is right now the scenario is the following. The all exchanges in our country are well connected and we have very high bandwidth. But the problem is we would have seen it uh, in a mobile or in our telephone lines also. Uh, you know, the kind of data rates we get is very low. So in FTTH or fiber to the home, the plan is you are building, you know, they will bring a fiber and from there, they would bring a fiber to your home through which all your, uh, you know, your uh, television, and uh, everything will and uh, both your telephone your internet your tv everything will come through that particular fiber therefore in uh, uh, you would have seen in mumbai tata sky you know it doesn't work in monsoon but once you have a fiber uh, you will not have any problem so this is happening in our right in mumbai itself uh, some of you may be having this already in your homes now looking at the indian scenario to kind of wind up, uh, uh, looking at the Indian scenario, uh, we apparently had, we were very lucky because we apparently had some very interesting developments. Somewhere in the mid 80s, uh, we some of you may be knowing uh, CDOT or Center for Development of Telematics. And uh, this man, Sam Pitroda, we, he came to India and he, uh, you know, the then uh, Prime Minister, Mrs. Gandhi, he was able to convince her that India need to get away from the old uh, crossbar technology and he uh, promised her a solution, an indigenous solution. And I have seen that exchange, you know, without AC anything, you can touch that exchange, your hand will get hot, that exchange will work. And uh, so CDOT, and I'm sure some of you may be familiar with this STD booths, which we don't use maybe anymore, but uh, uh, in the mid 80s, you know, we had a telecom mission and uh, we went full stream. Now, as I said, in the early uh, 80s, you know, we had the out outdated crossbar exchanges and uh, CDOT at the right time, uh, they came and they transformed and therefore we, uh, our exchanges also changed and with fibers, those exchanges got connected with fibers. Now, the Indian scenario, if you look at, uh, we have uh, companies several companies i listed only a few of them tejas networks is a very famous internationally known they sell a lot of products not only in india all over the world sterlight technologies limited they have about four factories and there is one factory right in maharashtra in aurangabad and i visited that factory about twice and it's wonderful they compete they uh, export every year you know millions of kilometers of uh, fibers so the total kind of fiber laid in India till about December 2018 is about, uh, you know, 300,000 kilometers roughly. So, uh, you know, Sterlite, they produce several million fiber kilometers every year. 
Now, the Indian telephone companies, all telecom companies are into OFC, all our connections. So, one thing you must remember is when you make a mobile call, what happens is, what should happen is, your call goes to the nearest mobile tower and from that mobile tower till the last mobile tower, everything should be on fiber. And then from that mobile tower to the other telephone line, it's maybe a mobile or landline, whatever it is. Uh, that's the way it should be. But unfortunately, only about 20% uh, of our mobile towers are connected with fibers. Uh, so that's a serious problem. So today, another major thing in our country uh, is uh, Bharat Broadband Network Limited by Government of India. Their plan is to connect uh, 2.5 lakhs gram panchayats with uh, uh, broadband connectivity and they are going full steam. Now 1.5 lakh gram panchayats today have uh, optical fiber uh, infrastructure. But unfortunately, what is the problem? This slide explains it all. The biggest problem today is this last mile connectivity. Till your exchange, all your gram panchayat, you have a very good connection. But from there to your home, the last mile is the problem. So this is where the the you know this is where so an FTTH or fiber to the home is what need to happen and another major thing should happen is all our mobiles towers need to be connected with fibers right now only about 20 percent of our mobile towers in the country are connected without this such a connectivity in, in India 5G is will not happen so this is where uh, you know our country has to uh, you know this is where we need to go now uh the very interesting to notice that uh, india is the third largest uh, optical fiber cable market in india after us and china and uh, 2019 the financial because of financial issues uh, or the ofc business in india was kind of less now one of the biggest problem with fiber is as i showed you one kilometer of say the bare fiber costs only about uh, 500 rupees when it becomes a cable uh, a proper cable the cost would go up at least by you know uh, twice so thank you for patiently listening to the uh, talk and uh, thank you very much thank you professor that was a wonderful presentation uh, we have several questions uh, but when before we take up the questions uh, i will request all participants to help us uh, rate the program. Uh, I have launched a, a, a feedback uh, survey onto the, uh, you know, you will all see it in your screen. Please provide uh, your feedback in the, in the, in the um, survey. Then we will take up uh, questions one by one. Uh, you, uh, are you ready? Can we take up the questions one by one? Professor? Yeah, please, please. Okay. Okay. Actually, first question, I think maybe he's your friend, Mr. Subhash. KT is actually... He... Yeah, my classmate, Wing Commander Subhash. Okay. He, he hasn't put in a question, but uh, I will allow him to talk. Mm, uh... Please. Hello, Mr. Subhash. Hello, hello, Joseph John. How are you? Fine, fine. Wonderful to hear your voice. <laughs> so nice it was so it's, it is as if uh, joseph john is, is sitting in front of me and talking very nice so nice thank you so much uh, asha uh, now you see uh, one of the disadvantages or challenges we are facing um, uh, with o ofc is uh, cable getting cut yeah yeah exactly yeah uh, compared to microwave and satcom you see exactly. So this is one uh, we have seen practically, uh, you know, uh, telephone getting interrupted or your uh, TV getting interrupted because of the cable cutter. Is there any tamper proof uh, cable which is likely to come in the market or near tamper proof? I don't know whether full tamper proof is possible or not. I, let me use a different word. We should make it India proof because <laughs> what, what happens is I tell you what, there are things which works, uh, there are things which we do in India which is specific. So we need to find an India specific solution. What is done in Western countries is they have already, like New York, somebody said, if you cut a road, you won't find soil. It's full of, uh, you know, uh, pipes. 
through which they are laid it about 100 years ago or 50 years ago what we don't have unfortunately is that and uh, you know we don't have this kind of a concept here so what we should do in my opinion is that we should have uh, you know metallic pipes and uh, you know they should be planned well in advance but i believe uh, some of we let me tell you right in iit campus i've been here 10 years in iit bombay campus three times fiber was cut <laughs> right inside the campus one contractor comes he'll just cut so the india the therefore the solutions telephone companies what they do is they would put the fiber inside metallic pipe may be too expensive so they use plastic pipe so that even when somebody cuts it he will know that there is a plastic they would at least stop so i believe uh, the only solution is to have uh, i think we i fully agree with you we need to have some kind of you know agreement so that just like you put water pipe or sewage you need to put pipes which are dedicated and you can put it forever that can be sh- shared and you can then this what done in all western countries yeah i think uh, thanks for the question i think i the very val- valuable question a real problem and i believe not only india all uh, developing countries has these challenges thank, thank you joseph john so nice thank you thank you uh next question is from vaishak uh he's actually asked uh, do you know where the okay he will come on line Mr. Vaishak? Yes, Vaishak. Vaishak? I think he, yeah, he need to yeah. unmute. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's not getting there. Uh, his question was that, do you know where, where the Cochin um, uh, Uh, landing is there for the uh, fiber i can uh, answer him for mumbai but i don't know where it is in cochin i don't know my feeling is it'll be somewhere near the port trust most likely because okay, that's a protected area it'll be somewhere near the harbor or near the navy or somewhere there i think i, I mean if you could just uh, maybe simple google will tell you or maybe <laughs> should be yeah uh, yeah i i'm sorry i don't know but i i think it should be in, um, somewhere near the port trust Okay. <laughs> uh next one uh, Mr. Narayanan Nair Ravindrana from Trivandrum. I'm uh, uh, asking to requesting him for your question Mr. Ravindrana. Yes. Please go ahead. I don't know whether I am audible. Yes. Yes, yes. you are. You are. Uh I am also a CTN of 67 batch. Wonderful. I used to attend all the webinar meets and this is one of the excellent presentations ever I have watched. All the credit goes to my team here. here. And uh, the, all, the, my, all my questions are answered in your presentation. Thank so you. I am very much thankful to you to get the information. Now we have seen that Reliance Geo and Asianet is trying to put the um, uh, fiber optics in our locality at Kaudia or Trivandrum. So let us see anyway um, we are ready to get to connect it I think it may come in due course one of the best presentation and uh, t- technically covering all aspects and the evolution how it was evolved I am really happy to you know, see this and I have shared with my colleagues also Mr Gopin um, Gopagumar Balakrishnan is a consultant Uh, from a uh, techno uh, he is also electrical consultant we used to share our exchanges thank you professor for your excellent presentation we are uh, liked it very much hope the session was a uh, small one hour is to less but still it has covered in brief uh, many many items what we need thank you professor yeah uh, thank you so much but i i owe uh, uh, you know i need to tell my especially i must appreciate the efforts put in by my team members rajiv ajit uh, papan sir they all gave me lots of feedbacks a lot of things happen in the background yeah and uh, i get all the credit ct alumni association yes. so good That's initiative true. by ct alumni association yeah, let wonderful. them let them continue this we look forward for every presentation Thank by you. that team this is the fifth i never used to miss anything 
because in the pandemic we cannot go out anywhere and uh, uh, spend some time only attending webinar is our main uh, main um, um, uh, uh, item to spend time thank you professor so much thank taken you. so much time and pain thank you thank you sir thank you very much for your support <laughs> okay um okay next question somebody has put uh, uh, in one um ab uh, can you please ask the question fiber optic sensing applications ab hello yeah, good evening sir uh, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful presentation uh, sir could you just uh, uh, touch upon uh, some of the uh, applications which are i heard are coming up uh, like fiber optics being used as sensors uh, various uh, sensor applications i believe uh, if you could just throw some light on that sir yeah thank you so much uh, maybe somewhere down the line maybe after one year uh, if there are no topics i can take that as a topic so this is another parallel uh, development something very interesting about uh, optical fiber is number one all sensors for example let's look at the temperature sensor which we use normally say ac it's a point sensor you can get uh, temperature only at that particular point but fiber is something very interesting you can get what is called distributed sensing so think about a mine you know you need to know whether there's a gas is leaking that kind of application fiber so fiber sensor is a huge area and uh, especially petroleum industry Uh, you know many many places so what they do is and let me tell you another another very interesting application of fiber optic uh, sen- sensing uh, what is called smart building i am told almost all the buildings in japan or in canada what they do when they make the building they put a fiber through the concrete so what happens is or when you make a bridge they put a fiber all along the bridge you know what happens even before an engineer can locate there is a rust point you know you better never if there is an increase in stress you can detect that from the other end uh, so one thing very interesting about fiber is you can uh, put a signal from one end and you can exactly tell at which point something is going wrong so let me give you like uh, my uh, classmate the wing commander subhash told about fiber being cut let's say that fiber got cut in mumbai but sitting it one side you can say exactly to 1 meter accuracy which point it got cut this uses what is called what is called otdr optical time domain reflectometry so what they do is they launch a fiber a laser pulse at one end that will go all the way and come back so from that uh, delay in time just like radar you can exactly calibrate it so these instruments are available today so you can exactly say at which point it broke and you can go there and repair it so you don't have to dig you you can go and dig exactly at the point so in fiber optic sensing what they do there are many ways of doing one is this kind of distributed sensing and uh, there is another one called uh, you know what they do is uh, they use what are called gratings they use sometimes some they they would use uh, 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 intensity now main advantage of fiber is because it's pla- it's a uh, you know it's a glass or let's say plastic so it can carry light even in explosive area so in especially in petroleum industry you know you can't use an electrical sensor because one spark is enough so all this kind of application or let's say in a barc you know you have a nuclear reactor you can't go anywhere near you can put a fiber uh, so this kind of uh, so fiberotic sensor lots of applications are there and uh, it's a very major area and i'd be very happy to be maybe one year down the line yeah okay thank you so much thank you uh, mr shah sumanam from can you please ask your question Mr. Shah Sumanam, try and again my batchmate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few minutes. Shah here. Yes, yes, Shah. Nice. Yeah. See, I have a small doubt that may you may feel it is silly. If the fiber is cut in the middle of the road or somewhere, how do you reconnect it? Yeah, it's not a silly question. It's a very important question. I should have covered that in my. So what is done is very very good question. So what is done is we have what are called splicing machines. Yes. So what do you, what do you, what do you do is basically I don't know you uh, and you might have seen it once in yeah, a while. Yeah, I've seen splicing machine. So what they what they do is basically they have a uh, it has to be done automatically. 
So what okay. they do is there is a machine. They will they will go to that place. They will prepare the fiber first, mm-hmm. and uh, it will cut. They'll 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 cut the fiber properly, and they'll put it on this machine. And what happens is that uh, machine it will automatically will put light from right. They'll bend. The, that's why I said fiber light can be tapped. How you bend the fiber? So what they do? They bend the fiber at that particular little bit. Put light from one end and pick up light from the other end. Bend it. And mm-hmm. using that, they'll align it precisely. And in which is pakka, the operator has to just say go. And once it does, he just fuses it. Arc fusion they do, and okay. they'll measure it and exactly tell you what's the loss also. And that loss has to be much, much, much less than. The if the loss of a fiber in a kilometer is only 0.16, you can't have the same loss. Yeah, yeah. So today's kind of loss you're talking about is 0.001 dB of that joint. Okay. That perfect. They've done it. So these are splicing machines actually, which is routinely used by everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very good question. Very important question. Very important question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you much. Nice yeah. to yeah. hear yeah. your voice. Thank, thank you. Sir, so, so, sh- shall I interrupt? Yeah. Please. Sir, uh, if if the fiber is cut, then how can we detect the exact position where is it cut? Okay, let me explain that again. Thank thank you, Vishak. So what this is what is called. Uh, see today, see fiber is something very interesting. Like uh, uh, even before cutting, let me say something else. Let's say that they find out that between Mumbai and Pune, somehow the fiber is not behaving properly for some reason. They don't know why. So what they do is they use this, uh, uh, mind you. Today, what happens is in a in a in a cable. I showed you 96 cables in a, the Reliance fiber. You would be surprised. Not even 12 fibers are used. Remaining are all are spare. So what they use is from that particular bundle, they take one fiber. They will connect at one end this OTDR, which means what they will do, they would launch a a, a a a laser pulse. And that would have, so most likely what would have happened is somewhere down the line somebody would have dug. Or somebody might have, you know, put some, uh, you know, some uh, armoring would have got damaged. So what will happen is the whole fiber would have got damaged or would have got pressed. So what will happen is they will see that at that particular point, maybe not cut, but maybe the attenuation is more high. So they can. So what happens is, like, just like radar. In a radar, what you do, you send a pulse. That pulse comes back. You they take this time interval. From that, you you know the velocity of uh, speed of light. From that, you can exactly tell what is the distance. So that's what they do. So they can go to that exact point, and uh, they can go and uh, open it and repair. That's what is done. So this is uh, can be extended. So for all, that's why it's very easy to find out. Army, I showed you that cable. Army is using in Rajasthan. I was telling you know. So because for army, one very important thing is one why fiber is very useful. They can take the fiber all the way to the front line without anything. They can take it on a on a helicopter all the way to the front line. And put it there, and send. And right now, is the today is done. All the way back, the video can come to the command center. But the problem is, who knows that somebody may be trying to tap. So what they have done is they have put fibers all around. So somebody is trying to tap or or bend. You know, you they would be monitoring that particular fiber. From that, they can find out that somebody is trying to do something. So it can immediately detect that somebody is trying to tap. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. A good question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vishal. Can you please unmute and ask your question? Yeah, Vishak asked just now. This is not Vishak only asked. No, Vishak, Vishak. Yeah, yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, so my question was regarding uh, the companies, the telecom companies that we are talking about earlier. So which yeah. of the uh, four companies uh, that we had showed uh, that we had talked about earlier is in a very good position to take on the internet bandwidth requirement from the fiber optic point of view? I would say all of them are equally. Uh, for example, let me tell you, my uh, friend Rajiv told me in his house, right in Mumbai, Airtel has brought a fiber, and they are offering uh, everybody a fiber connection to home. So right now, uh, good that you ask this question. Today's problem is we know that the mobile rates are so low in India, and the mobile companies are uh, out of business. Out. So this is a good business. So what all these companies are going to do? All of them, let me tell you, they have capability. They are all have laid fibers all over India. So it's only it's a it's a business model which which is important now. So what they are, that's why they are they are. So in my opinion, the way it will go, it should go, and uh, to sustain because all these companies should be there. Otherwise, we will have monopoly. 
at least three four companies should be there for competition sake so airtel is already doing and i know reliance is doing and uh, bsnl also is doing all companies are doing so i think it definitely in metros and i and you know one of our seniors uh, i think narayan sir mentioned that in kaudiyar they are putting it so you all companies with uh, only thing is the rates are maybe high i if i think if i remember correctly in mumbai the rates used to be about uh, 5000 rupees per month or something if they can bring it down to let's say 1000 rupees maybe everybody would go for it then is a huge business and i think that's the real business model and that's the next revolution i'm sure we would see the next years then all these fibers which are laid there can be used right now the whole bandwidth is wasted we are we are not even using the problem today is the last mile problem all our trunk routes are fantastic but the problem is the last mile and that connection has to improve right. thank you sir uh, just for my understanding purpose uh, so is the current cost of laying fibers uh being done individually at a player level or is it done on a public private partnership because what i understand is that the same resources can be used by different companies so how is it actually done i see as far as i know unfortunately they all do independently and each time they dig it this is the problem so that's why I'm saying what actually government should do in my opinion is you know they should uh, take the states into confidence and uh, make a digital highway i would say pipe or something you know but all have uh, laid their own cables you would see this in kerala i seen this in kerala in my own uh, village i seen bsnl has put kind of tag you know ofc cable we would have seen all over the place similarly everybody is putting it but right now i think is done independently uh, you know so i don't know i i agree there should be some way of uh, you know doing it together and that all this has to happen but i believe uh, as a country if we want to go forward in digital so this is where other countries are far ahead of us they have an agreement maybe because they have less population so they they do this so all i'm told in uh, canada or in japan all houses have a fiber and that's the next revolution we should see in 10 years time and uh, then only you know we can use all this bandwidth so i think we, all we are in the direction i believe uh, uh, things should happen i would believe thank you sir thank you okay uh, next uh, mr ram kumar can you please unmute and talk you said your question sir uh, can you can you hear me now yeah yeah yes yes yeah Uh, uh, lo- lovely, lovely to meet you, meet you almost in person, uh, dear Joseph, uh, and a wonder- wonderful, uh, wonderful talk, wonderful presentation. Uh, my questions may be very silly. Uh, you see, if the cable gets, if the fiber cable gets cut, uh, how can we ensure the the connectivity and how much time it takes? Yeah. Uh, your question is not silly it's a problem faced every day in india every day i said in my own campus iit campus three times it has happened <laughs> and iit kanpur i remember it happened there also you know everywhere it happens so it's a daily problem but uh, today i think the uh, you know they have all these uh, there are people uh, so like in mumbai you give a call within uh, maybe two or three hours they can restore it once they know where it is what they what they do is if a fiber cable is cut what they do they go to the point they first cut it okay and then they join another so what they would do they would kind of make a you might have seen this they might uh, make a kind of a joint uh, and they connect both ends put some extra fiber and join it and then they would uh, pack it up properly that's what they do so i think today things are very good i've seen this happening in iit campus and i've very nicely like a, a child i've gone and watched them and they was very wonder who why this fellow but so nice to watch and it takes about maximum maybe 1 hour 2 hour let's say half a day let's say maximum one day so it's it's this highly specialized and there are uh, people are uh, trained very well very well in this so this is a daily problem in every city so it's a problem my, uh, my question is in in the in the, in the particular gap of let us say 1 hour or something how do you ensure connectivity is the is the automatic backup is available through the satellite communication or not okay no satellite today is impossible i mean you can forget the body so what they do is very smart so let me assume that right now like i'm sitting in mumbai let's say that a fiber got cut between powai and vikroli but what they do all the exchanges in mumbai are connected okay so they already assume that there may be a fault so the powai now will get connected not through vikroli the connection will come from ghatkopur or somewhere 
okay so so that's where anywhere you get cuts nobody nothing is going to happen and you will not even know that it got cut so the that's why the network uh, they they thought about all this well engineers we are all engineers so we can be proud that on day one they thought this will happen so the connection will come from somewhere else so yeah. till it's rest- so you will not even know that something got cut unless there is only one fiber comes to a campus it got cut like us it happens <laughs> then is different story so, so what, what you are communicating is almost fail safe because even yeah. if one route is cut it get the, the signals get fed through the other route exactly, so one exactly. More, one, my one more question is yeah. the, 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 let us say the oil companies a uh, yeah. lot of petrol stations are there in the remote rural areas also now with many automated petrol stations coming up uh, the data connectivity is very important So yep. the last mile, last mile connectivity is becoming a you know a yep. source of concern. Yep. The, some places the VSAT is being used. Yeah. So uh, how do what do you feel? What is the what is the way forward? No, I think I believe uh, see VSAT all has to go. The advantage of VSAT is it, it was an, again a very old technology. Okay. But I, ultimately, if we have to go forward, I believe uh, we all have to come together, especially government. You know, uh, plays. All the the uh, telecom press. I I believe maybe try should take an initiative, but it's happening already. This Bharat the uh, BBNL I talked about, they are doing it already. So highly ideally, finally see uh, VSAT is the kind of a backup, only as a backup. But ideally, fiber, uh, you know, that has to happen, and we need to think about it. Like you know, it's happening very well. Like I was told, even fiber gets cut, nothing happens. Nobody knows because all are networked well. So that kind of a planning need to happen. I believe that's the way to go now. Otherwise, we will we will get right now. There's a huge bottleneck, huge bottleneck, because of last mile connectivity. Yeah, thank you. And so, I think there is a there is a question the uh, you know on on this fiber cut. That machine's name is OTDR. OTDR. You can just do a googling. Uh, optical time domain reflectometry. This is you can just you will get. This is easily available today. It will cost about three four lakhs. And the, the technology is so high. You know what they do is uh, the the technique the scientific technique is. when light goes through fiber is very interesting the light gets scattered this is called rayleigh scattering and uh, it's called back scattered so as the light goes the light gets uh, back scattered and that light is picked up from the sending end itself and automatically that gives you an idea about the attenuation of the fiber so that's the very very unique to fiber which is not possible in a cable in a fiber because of this back scattering you can use this to characterize your so that's why i said if a connector is bad you can tell that that particular connector is bad that precisely you can tell today and these machines are uh, routinely available so the fiber optic market i mean as a technology it has enabled many industries huge uh, i mean that's why uh, really good i mean we should as a country i think we should really we are unfortunately the market only we are not um, many a lot of research or development is not happening unfortunately including iits there are only about 12 iits where out of the 30 where fiber optics are even taught so that's a sad part i think there is in us every university have uh, they they jump from you know uh, the conventional areas into photonics because this is the future and uh, i think as a country we need to jump forward yeah so thank you wonderful wonderful thank you thank you mr ram kumar jam krishnan uh hi uh can you hear me yes yes, yes. yeah so my question is you you are uh, stressing on fiber as the future but now there are like off late there are a lot of sat- satellite based internet projects like spacex starlink and oneweb so they are all uh, planning to bring uh, high, low latency high bandwidth internet to the home using a satellite network so will that at least make fttth obsolete or what do you see i mean the future of fiber optic versus satellite internet see uh, i mean uh, you you can prove me wrong but uh, see satellite uh, the advantage of satellite is uh, you can have a satellite phone with you, you can go anywhere and get connected but otherwise uh, satellite in is highly uh, you know even as a, te- a satellite te- like let me give you an example earlier when we had to make an internet let's say a, an international call those calls used to go through satellite and uh, uh, you may be remembering huge amount of echo echo was there because the satellite uh, that channel it is highly moody depending on the cloud so satellite outside is like a backup or an emergency but that will so for example isro 
is doing a lot of work in the satellite communication. They are very different, but not for telecom. So I don't think fiber and satellite are in competition at all. They are two different applications. So fiber uh, is the only way thing which can give you bandwidth. 6G, and, uh, you can check actually. 5G, the whole world is not talking about 5G. And uh, the first thing they talk about is mobile backhaul has to be fiber if you want to go 5G. And uh, I don't think... Uh, you know, unless we drastically change, we will not have 5G in the country. And uh, about a year ago, we had uh, all the industrialists and, uh, you know, IIT uh, faculty, we were all brainstorming. And uh, one of the industry persons said something very interesting. 5G market just in India is a $2 billion business just in India. And all that is going to be important and sad. So he was telling it's so sad. And so we are far behind. But so 5G has to happen. Fiber connectivity, backhaul connectivity has to happen. Otherwise, we will not have 5G. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. I agree with the backend connectivity. What I am referring to is the so-called like the, the, the end-user terminals. For example, this fiber to home internet. So th these companies are putting a lot of money into the Starlink and those projects. So there must be some kind of feasibility study done. So that's why I was wondering uh, whether like you see a challenge in that segment not the back-end connectivity for the exchanges and all the telecom sector, but the, the end-user connectivity. See, the problem, why I'm saying is this is just my opinion. See, home, like, think about Tata Sky. Uh, you know, as soon as it rains, you have no connection. So, satellite connection actually is uh, useful, let's say, when you're talking about a hill station. Or, see, the thing is, a lot of these are business models. We have to use our own, so I would say we should do our own search. But I don't think, uh, uh, you know, satellite is a kind of a back uh, uh, fiber to the home. I don't think satellite is a solution. Definitely not. And uh, best example is, you uh, know, Tata Sky connection in Mansur. So I think fiber to fiber is, is the solution. I think you can do some searching. I may be wrong, but I think uh, with the best of my knowledge, this is the way to go forward. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Also, Shyam, maybe we will have a session on uh, the satellite communication pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Good. Um, Nathan, your question, please. Nathan. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Very much informative. Uh, we appreciate that. So, we talked about uh, the last mile as a big challenge. Can we not cover that segment alone with the wireless? Yeah, but the problem, yeah, thank you for the question. The problem is wireless, who? Who will put? You know, you wireless means you have to see wireless problem with wireless is the following. Think about why I have in my own home problem. I can tell you. See, the Wi Fi, what is the problem at home? You put a Wi I have in my house, we have two Wi Fi routers in one home. Okay. So the Wi Fi connectivity is max, it's a kind of 2.5 gigahertz. It's a kind of a direct uh, uh, line of sight. So typically, you can't get more than about maximum maybe 10 meter so wireless connectivity has that's, that's a big challenge very big challenge so this is why wireless connectivity uh, unfortunately can be used only for kind of a wi-fi this kind of application only so i don't think uh, wi-fi uh, so right now wi-fi is being used for all the mobiles wherever they don't have fiber they are using actually some kind of wheels. but that's where the problem is that's why we don't get uh, good connectivity uh, you know, the data connectivity through mobiles because they are not, those mobile towers are not connected to these exchange. Ex up to exchange, you have huge bandwidth. But exchange to that uh, mobile tower, unfortunately, may or may not be through a fiber. So a lot of them are through uh, kind of, you know, wireless channels. So that's the challenge. So I think, I don't think uh, wireless, wireless uh, main thing, as I told you, is the length. You can't go more than about 50 meters. And uh, 5G, why 5G, why 6G? Because there are standards on how much power you can put. Okay. Why are you going to 5G? So 5G means you'll have more and more mobile towers. 6G even more. Which means, uh, you know, the only, the, they all have to be connected. So that's why wireless, because now we didn't bother. Uh, you may be knowing that uh, many wireless operators in our country, I know in about Bombay itself, they were violating the, the, the standards. They were radiating huge amount of power. Why? Because you and I were complaining that we are not getting signal. So the, the, the solution is not to increase the RF power. It will damage you. And the solution is to connect them through fibers and have more towers. Uh, one, one more question. Uh, so we mentioned that like uh, 
instead of companies putting their own cable individually, there must be a government agency to lay out the central line and then rest of the people leverage that. Given that BS, why BSNL is not coming forward with that kind of idea? They take the responsibility of putting the road, like pipeline, and then uh, rent it to other companies. Yeah, thank you for the question, but I don't know the answer. But I think these are you know good theoretical questions. But I don't think you see problem is the these are things I think we need to learn. Is from. that where we are failing? That that was exactly the exactly exactly. We unfortunately we are a good democracy, but for us democracy means fighting with each other. But uh, see in the in the Western countries, uh, I think we have to learn a lot from uh, Western countries. Yes, right? that's right? what I'm so coming. There, there they come together. I tell you, fibers. Let me tell you how Japan went ahead. You know what they did? Japan government brought all the uh, operators. They said sit here. You have no competition between yourself. Okay, you, all your products we'll buy. Let's sit together and see what is good for Japan. And he said, you do this, you do this, you do this. I'll pay for it. But I don't think we have that kind of that has to happen. And I believe, uh, say somehow, try. I can see only try, and uh, you know, somebody bringing all of them together, and nobody trust. See, unfortunately, there is so much of uh, what shall I say, you know, negativity. You know, somehow. that has to go and everybody should be assured of business and i think everybody there a lot of uh, that's what is happening i i i really wish that uh, what you said would happen that companies would come together and plan together and i then everybody will benefit everybody would have business that should happen and i'm also hearing that get it a bsnl right that's a that's a theme there i don't know uh, i don't know where is the right to say in this public uh, forum see unfortunately yes. you know bsnl uh, has extremely good uh, let me tell about alttc which i have been to in gasibad they have the best training center and uh, bsnl uh, let's not uh, belittle them they have a huge in fact all telecom operators are trained in bsnl very interesting all the technicians are trained and bsnl and mtl said we are happy to do that because they have, have all the facilities but the problem unfortunately is you know is a business model and things don't work and there is let's accept there is corruption in all public sector you know there are problems so i think uh, somehow i think you know things let uh, but uh, bsnl in kerala fantastic i have no complaints it's too good so it, it varies from sector to sector some places bsnl is working extremely well mtnl or bsnl but i believe is a tough competition and somehow maybe they are pcs are not geared for this kind of competition just like you can see air india and so i think that's a lot of issues here but i i believe uh, we should have uh, we should uh, have bsnl surviving like what the uk has done british telecom is a separate company that should happen they should operate like <laughs> another company yeah thank you okay yeah thank you very much for thank you nan Shraji Matthews, sir, can you please ask your query? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, yes. yes. Hi, uh, great to hear you, uh, especially from the IIT on a on a topic which is very relevant to to digital India uh, in the current scenario and uh, the future for this country. Uh, Ma. You know, my 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 question was uh, was limited to the undersea cable, but uh, with Ajit's uh, and your permission, I would expand it to two more uh, a few more issues. Uh, you can answer it one by one. First, my question was, uh, which is very very simple, you can answer in no time. That uh, what is the power source for the undersea cable repeat? how do you ensure uh, that the power uh, is restored when uh, you know there is a over a period of time it it, it, it may be uh, depleting and becoming inactive that is one second uh, after hearing all the discussions subsequently i have come up with this uh, uh, doubt in my mind uh, Uh, you have been mentioning about the role of bbnl uh, the role of trai uh, what i have seen is that uh, now sharma has retired as the chairman of tra and wagela has come sharma was a person who was uh, uh, who had a very clear understanding of how to handle the last mile uh, issue as far as uh, connecting homes across the country is concerned 
but DOT has a different view about it. DOT thinks that only the telecom companies can do it, and uh, TRI used to think that uh, no, it is not the telecom companies, but uh, the cable networks across the company uh, uh, across the country are already in uh, 100 million homes, and uh, they are already connecting the homes. So, and uh, simultaneously, we can also see that uh, each of the state is going through their own different plan. There is an AP fiber happening in Kerala. There is another uh, one happening. The name I wouldn't like to mention. It's not a good thing to mention now. Uh, do you think, uh, to my mind, uh, IIT uh, institution like IIT should be able to bring, you mentioned about, you know, what happened in Japan, what the government did, they called everybody and uh, uh, brought them into a discussion. Uh, I, 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 do you think that IIT would be able to, uh, are you having any any presence uh, with the government? Are you having any dialogue? Do you think uh, it will be possible? Uh, yeah, if you could just answer me. The first question uh, quickly you can mention and the second one you can take your own time. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Shaji, so much for your question. So. Uh, Basically, uh, that's a very good question. I intentionally did not uh, mention it because, you know, to cover everything in 45 minutes. So what is actually done is, just take an example, transatlantic cable. It's about 6,000 kilometers, let's say, between New York and, uh, say, uh, you know, UK. So what they do is, out of that 6,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers will be powered from New York side, let's say. And uh, the remaining 3,000 kilometers will be powered from the, the UK side. So what do they do is this cable would carry DC power, very high voltage power. So this, the repeaters are, mind you, built inside the cable. So that has to be done very carefully, but they, know they perfected this very well and uh, very high voltage, something like 2000 volts. And uh, power requirement may be quite high, something like 100 watt, just some number I'm telling. So what they do is each of those repeaters, mind you, the repeaters there and uh, the submarine cables would use the, you know, the most, uh, uh, kind of uh, the latest technology in terms of amplifiers. So let's say the amplifiers, optical amplifiers are put every, let's say, 100, uh, you know, kilometers. If that's the case, you know, each of these amplifiers have to be powered. So all this power comes from this DC power supply. And uh, so as the, so about half the line will be covered by, uh, length will be covered by uh, the one side, New York side, let's say, other side from the land, the UK side. And it has been working very well, as I told you. And today only I came to know why sharks attack. It seems because of the high voltage and uh, these cables are not that well armored. Maybe the shielding is not enough. The the electric field is felt by the sharks. And uh, when they go near and they get some kind of a shock or some kind of a, you know, they get into something and they feel that there's some threat. And they cut it, they chew it and they die. So uh, very interesting. Yeah, that's the first part. Coming to the second part, I uh, thank you for saying uh, uh, all governments uh, have uh, put IIT professors in this committee. So TRA also have, but the so all of us. Have, but the thing is, our contributions are mostly technical contributions. And uh, so I know my own colleagues. Some of them are there in TRA, and they are all very eminent people. So let's 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 give credit to the government. All governments. Uh, what, whether it is, uh, I, mean, I have done some work for uh, uh, IOCN, Indian Oil Corporation. I don't want to say that now, but so IITs are involved in all all kinds of, uh, you know, India-specific problem solving. So they have presence, but most of the time our solutions are technical solutions. But uh, most of the problems need both technical and business and many many things. And I believe this is something we have to learn, and uh, we need to learn how to negotiate without getting angry with each other. You know, and agreeing to disagree. I think that I think it will happen. I believe slowly we'll learn. You know how to. Uh, I think we need to. That it need to happen. But uh, thanks for putting. I fully agree with you. Otherwise, we cannot go forward unless you know we agree and uh, cooperate with each other. We can't go forward. You're quite right. Thank you, Shaji, for your. Uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, my suggestion to you is that you should push your way into these discussions. Otherwise, we are not going to move forward because. I have seen the DOT and the TRA. TRA, of course, has been a very progressive organization in this direction. DOT somehow has not been. Uh, 
Uh, so I would uh, suggest that uh, from IIT side there should be more initiative uh, into this and uh, should not shy be shy, uh, you know, uh, as uh, purely a technical uh, thing because the problems in India is not merely technology. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thanks, thanks. I'll, I'll I'll share it with my colleagues. I fully agree with you, fully agree. But there are limitations, you know. They can tell, but how much they'll hear. But it's a very good point. But I fully agree with you. Okay, we are running out of time, so we'll go through the balanced questions as quickly. We are still have about ten people asking questions. Any uh, Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, good evening. I'm, yeah, I'm working for Air India, looking okay. after network and IT infrastructure at Vandrum. Okay. I like the way you mentioned about AI and BSNL. Uh, now I'll come to the question. It was a dream joining CDOT after we left the campus. So question may not be that technical. Was it Indira Gandhi or Rajiv Gandhi who bought in Sam Petroda, who developed 120 port exchanges that revolutionized telecom in India? Shall I answer that, Panichet? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I can answer that uh, very confidently because I have met uh, Sam Peter in those days. Let me say that I was very fortunate to. Uh, I means we. He came to. I was an IIT Kanpur in 1984. I think he came to IIT Kanpur. He was uh, giving uh, the convocation. He was uh, he was the chief guest, and he gave and talked to us uh, in uh, to uh, all the faculty. I was a research engineer then. He talked to us. You know, what happened is the following, very interesting. He came to Mrs. Gandhi in 1984 or I think 1983 and he asked for half an hour appointment. And he his point was this, that uh, at that time we were importing uh, obsolete uh, exchanges, crossbar exchanges from Belgium and paying royalty. We don't even own them. And he said, this money, okay, if you even a fraction of this money, if you can invest you can make Indian specific solutions. So what he told me, Mrs. Gandhi, give me one, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, one lakh or uh, one crore. Yeah, yes. he said, give me one crore rupees every month for 36 months. Don't ask me how I spend, don't interfere, but ask me for results. And uh, Mrs. Gandhi was too pleased. He asked only for half an hour appointment. She gave him three hours appointment. She was so pleased. And I have seen this exchange. I have seen it working. And uh, so he was. I, when when the, you know Shaji made the comment, I believe we need uh, leaders like this. You know, we need very. Uh, and I, I I admit that you know we being in IITs, we should play that role. Some of my colleagues have done it. Some of us we should do. I agree. To some extent, we should push. He was able to go and uh, convince Mrs. Gandhi. So he and and he. Uh, I mean, uh, he took one rupee towards his salary and uh, you know as a token salary and within one year within uh, one year you develop that exchange and uh, i've seen that exchange i touched it with my hand and it'd be hot for the exchange work second thing very very important not just exchange he standardized all the industries in india especially electronic industries he called all the industries capacitors resistors inductor and those days it used to be called c dot certified I think we are very happy to hear all that. Yeah, that's all that was done. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. So, sir, I guess in the next ministry, he was thrown, he was uh, denied uh, denied entry into the government. Okay. That that always happened. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. You're you're quite right. But he was brought back again. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Benijan. Yes, sir. Satish, I think this question was answered, but you want to ask the question again? Satish? Satish, is, is he there? And this question, sir, Ajit, if you could just copy it somewhere, it'll be yeah, interesting, you know, maybe some, somewhere. And uh, maybe later we can answer them individually or if something not covered. We will answer that later because I think this question, uh, he, he, how the joining happens and what is the cost of that. Yeah, okay. That's very cheap. The cost is very, very cheap. Very, very cheap. This machine would cost <clears throat> about three, four lakhs. 
and uh, it's all done automatically this splicing machine uh, it does uh, and i seen we have this machine in our lab and uh, that it's uh, hardly cost 2 3 lakhs it's very very cheap handy it's a portable equipment and uh, you will see this all the time all this uh, telecom operators will have it okay. we'll go to the next one uh, hari hari shankar hari shankar hello yes sir forward yes hello uh, good evening sir it was a wonderful uh, presentation i enjoyed it very much thank you hello thank you thank you thank you hrsing please please go on uh, sir uh, sir my question is uh, uh, is the requirement for uh, i'm just uh, reading it uh, from my query itself is the uh, requirement for oaf only going to increase in the future or is, is there a saturation rate or something yeah a good question but i would i would say uh, it's going to increase uh, definitely but uh, see a fiber typical lifetime of a cable is about 25 years so that's why reliance has put 96 cable so uh, difficult to answer but i believe it will uh, get used only when this fdth can happen <coughs> fiber to the home can happen so uh, in that anticipation i believe all <coughs> companies have put this fibers there so uh see so the, the problem is they are laid these cables hoping business would come so uh, i agree with you many manufacturing companies uh, fiber companies are wound up you are right because uh, you know it's a bad uh, business strategy if something uh, lasts for 25 years so that's why i believe you know <clears throat> god keeps us keep uh, keeps on giving us challenges you know like uh, so there are uh, better and more and more needs like fiber sensors and so on but yes some amount of saturation is likely to happen but i believe uh, in india a country like india once this fiber to the home happens and i believe uh, every bit of fiber can be used that need to happen and 5g 5g it has to happen then you would see all these fibers being used right so i think that's the 5g and uh, uh, i would say first priority is 5g all our mobile towers need to be connected but which means our mobile rates will go which none of us will agree so the companies are thinking about generating that revenue through fdth fiber to the home so hopefully if they get enough revenue then they can put back all then all of us will benefit so if the mobile rates go high hey, please don't uh, i have paid 45 rupees for making an std call in 1995 so that was the scenario in the in 90s and today is so cheap and you know so cheap yeah thank you for that question so i think uh, yes and no <laughs> thank you very mr john melate of oh, can you guys hear me yes 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 okay uh, joseph john this is baby john oh hello hello baby ha ah. <laughs> this is a real master class and i think what is needed is a cultural shift um you know um here in new york if before you can uh, i mean you you need a gas connection you need you need a you, you call uh you have to call there is a culture of calling the utility so they will mark the water line the the gas line etc so somebody else can, will not accidentally um cut. cut the cable and things like that I, i'm not saying it cannot happen but it is rare so what is needed is not technology but culture along with technology to say hey this is the process that you should have you need to have some to uh, lay something new see what is existing and the the utilities here will do that for free so the solution is not technology it is a cultural process development for the interruptions part Thank you so much baby my classmate so nice to hear your sound after so many years i fully <laughs> agree with you i fully agree with you but i think uh, i i would put this challenge back to all my cetns uh, you know kerala has uh, shown the example in many ways i believe this is maybe a cetns we can all put our heads together and uh, you know work towards this kind of a cultural change i believe uh, especially to sit across the table i think i fully agree with the uh, baby let's learn good things from the west you know Uh, uh and i believe this is really very important and uh, that's completely lacking 
completely lacking. And I believe because you know somehow that's the way I think how we work. It's the kind of the way we are used to, and things work. You know, we yeah. we take a lot of pride in Jugad, but I don't think uh, Jugad is right. You know, Jugad may not be bad. It is only that you can be frugal, but uh, you kind of have to plan and make sure exactly. when you do no harm kind of business. So you you're doing something. Let's make sure what is there already. So uh, it, it's a slight of planning. And a different topic, Joseph John. Um, some of the problem with uh, te technocrats is we present a solution, but we don't uh, like Sam Petroda did. You don't give the cost-benefit analysis and say we can actually save money by doing something. So, the last mile, the fiber to the home. You said the industry, the, the manufacturers, they have to raise the revenue. Maybe the solution is. Uh, you are borrowing expense from somewhere else. So uh, this is a case where the government has to take the um, honors and bringing everybody together, give the investment, which will then uh, help everybody. Uh, I, I mean, I remember uh, paying uh, when, uh, I mean, I've been here in New York for 20 plus years, I mean, no, 33 plus years, half my life. I uh, first initial years when I was calling it was four dollars and change. Now it is free. So that is the change that has happened, all because of all the fiber laid all over the place. So it may be that you guys can, uh, you and uh, others in the uh, academia, can present solutions which, and present the cost benefit analysis for that. Thanks, John. I think I, uh, maybe I fully agree with you. Maybe I, you're putting a lot of responsibility, and I believe, and uh, I think I feel I'm already feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I fully agree with you. We should take it forward. And uh, let me, I'll take this back, this message back to. Yeah, and again, it is the, it, uh, uh, Joseph John, it is the way, I mean, you are, uh, we, we all want the same end result. It is that uh, if you present it as a solution rather than, See, yeah. see, I think people want to don't want to spend money. But if you're saying you will save money by doing this, okay. Um, okay. then I think you are selling a solution, not a problem. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, baby. I think this is where we like to see a way forward. I think we need to I fully agree with you. I think uh, I think I, I would take some initiative in this direction. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And it was a real masterclass, Joseph John. <laughs> thank you so much. Really, really well put. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, Devi. Okay. Uh, Mr. Srinivas Ravindran. Mr. Srinivas and Ravindran. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor John, for uh, this wonderful presentation. My question was regarding the acceptance criteria of OFC, OFC cables or o optical fiber cables. Somewhere we read about uh, weight uh, in kilogram per kilometer. Uh, is that uh, a really relevant one while accepting uh, 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 during the acceptance criteria for OF cables? Can I answer? Yeah. Yeah, please. See, see, uh, see, we need to be careful. So that's why our the, the technical part is important. See, <clears throat> uh, maybe let me, shall I just share that uh, particular sheet? I mean, they kind of, uh, I can just go back to the cable. Then I'll be able to answer your question properly. Uh, let me just uh, share the screen. Uh, just once again, and just show you that particular one to say, uh, where is the problem? Just that cable, I'll just go back quickly to that cable. Yeah. Sure, sir. Uh, so let me just quickly go go down. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the uh, cable. Then I'll show you. Uh, see what what is the problem? Yeah. Yeah. See this particular slide. Now look at the extreme one which you see extreme left one. So that's a very thick cable. And why it's thick? Because uh, army has asked it to be thick. It's an armored cable. But the actual fiber is hardly anything. The weight wise is negligible. 
so i would say i would put the other way given a fiber cable so each of the all our cables all of them use fibers maybe sometimes let's say take 12 fibers all of them but the weights are all different so i would say it's extremely difficult to and unless you're talking millions of kilometers or let's say thousands of kilometers this weight difference between one fiber and another fiber cable is all depends on the design again it's a kind of a, it's, it's not a proper way definitely not a proper uh, I, I don't know why that's used i is it, does it answer your question uh, of course uh, uh, to a large extent but yeah. typical question was during one of the project implementations we yeah. recommended for uh, 100 kg per uh, kilo uh, kilometer cable and uh, vendor was coming out with an 80 kg per kilometer cable but all the core and everything was uh, as per the specification so are we at a point to really reject that that I was the uh, yeah, i would uh, let me put it let me put the question back to you what was the application what was the application uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, cctv surveillance and uh, heavy load of video was uh, supposed to be but planned. again are, are the fibers to be buried underground or just yeah, aerial yeah yeah buried underground buried underground. underground so buried underground means again see the point is uh, you know the weight is not because if you are burying underground the, the most sensible thing to do in india uh, i'll just unshare the, uh, uh, the screen so the most sure. sensible thing to do in india is to put it through a plastic pipe why because somebody even uh, try to dig it he will first hit the plastic pipe so you don't need huge amount of uh, armoring but you need some amount of armoring is required like uh, reliance they have put this that that particular cable which i showed you 96 fiber that cost okay. of that particular cable is 1 lakh per kilometer sure sure out of which about 48000 is for the fibers remaining 52000 rupees is for the cable uh, design okay. So the cable design depends on your requirement, how much load would come and so on. So I would say you have to very judiciously choose. But I would say put the other way: what are the total length involved in your surveillance application? No, this is for uh, uh, dam sites. It's in remote sites and all. Okay. Actually, this is for a project implementation for dam surveillance in multiple dam sites. So it's very difficult okay. because the terrain is very important. You know where you are yeah. laying the yeah. fiber. Yeah. So I would right. say you know more important is. <clears throat> the uh, whatever cable you have chosen does it satisfy the terrain requirements and so on and i would say in india the most sensible thing to put is put through a plastic pipe if possible a, a gi pipe okay okay and uh, then you know at least a damage because <coughs> gi pipe plastic pipe why because uh, you know easy to put it and it won't rust and so on and that's what everybody does you now uh, mm-hmm. so then what will happen is your asset would be kind of protected for quite some okay. time so you don't need much armoring then so i would say you should carefully okay. look at the fiber design and ask them this questions back you know and you should look at the terrain requirements what is the most hostile how much is required will this do or will that do but there are i can let me tell you put it back to you uh, the cable all that i showed this uh, the company birla for akava very kind to give me they knew that i am a professor the 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 gel manager there his son was studying in iit kharagpur so he okay. very graciously gave me all this fiber said sir take this and show it to your students so yeah. i'm so happy so if you tell them they'll design it for you they'll tell you so some of these are very technical yeah. they'll tell you i think you should do that okay. rather than buying from uh, you know somebody go to some of these companies you can they'll pay you can pay them consultancy money they will exactly tell you in fact all those cables were designed by them them okay. even they are exporting okay. to cable to europe also so they have expertise actually i'm talking about the riva company in riva birla forakawa they and most of the companies have expertise in designing cable for you okay okay thank you thank you very much thank you very much professor thank you, thank you. Uh, we have two more questions uh, we'll quickly go through them so that we can close uh, is it okay professor Uh, perfect it's nice to have questions yeah yeah mm-hmm. mr raju gopal ramachandran uh, good evening uh, uh, first i uh, should thank sita and i was also the person right it was really good thank and you. it was so very clear am i audible first yes 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 you are okay i am uh, oh, i am one of those guys who passed out in 88 and missed the uh, computer I mean, software revolution and joined the oil professionals i worked in shell and big companies 
like oil is to oil oil and gas industry uh, communication is very important for oil and gas industry without that especially fiber but then having said that uh, you should note that uh, none of our fibers gets damaged and very often we have dual redundancy fibers also because they are laid properly and they, and these fibers uh, cater to various this in communications security data retrieval and can run into hundreds of kilometers uh, from surface or sub surface i worked in uh, i've seen that in uh, the kartha gas uh, complexes it's a huge network and it is really a backbone and it's a revolutionary for to get uh, within trickle in the uh, in microseconds uh, communications and controls with a remote now coming back to my question which was partially answered but uh, i would still say that you a lot of countries are investing in low earth orbits satellites which can over a period of time can lead to some revolution because uh, in india especially the last uh, last mile connectivity is still a problem and it will still continue to be a problem you have said that you can use plastic probably your meaning is tp pipe which is not uh, which can be damaged uh, with with any sharp tool you can damage uh, hdb pipe and ga pipes are also uh, costly and may not be having sufficient life to retain the integrity of the fiber and wireless of course uh, you said it is correct uh, when 5g and 60 you are going to roast all the people around so i still see a gap there in the last minute connectivity fiber is good uh, but uh, the what you call uh, with indians track records of uh, not following the rules uh, we can be prone to damage in the long run and what i would say, uh, ask you is and the question do you foresee how long uh, is there any competitor for fiber uh, other than what you probably the low earth uh, orbit satellites yeah so uh, thank you for the question i uh, yeah so uh, i mean Uh, let me just tell what i i know not not much except i have evaluated some phd thesis from iit delhi on this topic and so on so isro isro is actually doing work on this but i believe their purpose is something else their purpose is basically you know for a kind of inter satellite communication for uh, you know uh, taking care of their own satellites but if you remember in the initial 80s the you know, in, in our country uh, education all the satellites were uh, stations were installed uh, primarily for education and then through microwave and so on so i believe it uh, it can so for example tata sky uh, you know companies like tata sky or other companies can have this last mile connectivity but the problem i see is the following uh, you know it again involves <clears throat> but i uh, it can be done but i think Uh, the data rates have to be worked out but i'm not sure how much data rate uh, you can get it but you may not be able to get the kind of data rates you need for example uh, uh, the data rates you need see if, if uh, uh, i remember some years ago one uh, uh, you know one indian scientist who was working in germany literally challenged uh, me uh, when he said that in germany the the companies telecom companies would assure you uh, 50 mbps any time but he asked me this question can you you say so much so much can you really your tele- telephone companies can they guarantee guarantee so i believe uh, that's where the problem is going to be maybe satellite uh, i i myself don't know how much it can get but my feeling is it may be costly also but definitely that's a solution sorry and the only, only thing is satellite to be costly because uh, isro i think they're doing work they're definitely sorry, doing work on it sorry that. sorry to interrupt you but probably you are right uh, in all metros where there is high density of uh, requirement but again where there is uh, less density of uh, requirement for this thing you might find or even a remote location you might find satellite as a best mode because nobody is ready to invest in fiber optical to remote yes. areas yeah so this vsats uh, are exactly that for that purpose only vsat uh, it's already already that's being used here and there but uh, i if i remember correctly the data rates uh, possible are very low 64 kbps or something like that. but they are uh, right now they are in use many places many villages we set is available but i think data rates are very low if i remember correctly okay thank you thank you very thank, much thank, thank you, you thank you so much thank you thank you rajendra uh mr thomas abraham
sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yes. So, my question is, I I have a uh, DSL connection at uh, my home, and I always change the modem and stuff, and I just tie twist the copper cable just like that. If I have an extra pair of copper cable, it's very easy to extend it. Now, how do we extend? a optic fiber cable i mean i'm not talking about the uh, large scale or industrial thing with the splicing machine but on a home level like if i need an extra meter to move the router to like a little bit left or right what's the solution for that yeah thank you thomas yeah right now let me tell you so i i don't think uh, so let me give you two, uh, two alternatives see right now what uh, most companies do is like uh, just like you know like an iit my campus iit has given us the an ethernet port in one of the rooms it's my job to take the ethernet connectivity by putting router anywhere so similarly these companies what they do they would bring this fiber to one point and what they might do is that they might put some extra length because that doesn't cost anything but they will not allow you to because these fibers are uh, made of glass and they will not like you to play with it so they would uh, put it like you know tata sky when they come home to install your your uh, your uh, uh, you know your tv they would come and install and say don't touch it so same thing might happen so i don't think any company will allow you but let me that's the first alternate second alternate i was talking about this plastic fiber one of the major reasons why in europe especially europe only brought this technology in a big way entire europe about seven countries together so their point is exactly what you said that uh, without any uh, so these are plastic fibers and uh, you don't need any specialized mesh, uh, specialized uh, fiber and i have right, right now this fiber which i i just let me just show you which i showed in the so this, this is a fiber okay so this kind of fiber is right now used in navi mumbai and all what they do is they bring a glass fiber to your building and from the building uh let's say premises to your house they use this plastic fibers and uh, so there are so this the advantage of this is because light will not be it, it will not be uh, laser or something it will be leds so it's uh, you know it will not damage your eye or anything so this is possible and it will happen i think that's the way things will happen this particular one very easy to connect them and it's 1 mm okay and uh, you can easily make a connect so this is possible this might happen so two answers first answer uh, company will not allow you to change second one hopefully in some years time you can uh, do this yourself okay thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you uh is professor patmanav uh, here still there sir he had some questions you have already answered them but if he is there i would like to see if he is there no normally we are not able to get him <laughs> in all the sessions okay so that is the end of our uh, uh, question answer session uh, can i request uh, mr rajiv to uh, propose word of thanks yeah so i think we had a wonderful session and uh, an excellent question answer uh, session too so thank you professor joseph john for uh, demystifying the topic fiber optics communication illuminating the world and a wonderful presentation yes this is a formal vote of thanks and uh, professor joseph john is my friend for last 42 years at least 42 43 years we know very well we passed out from cet the same year but from two different branches so thank you very much for a wonderful session and uh, our sincere gratitude to all those who have registered and to all those who have attended this webinar today and we are very happy to see the kind of interaction happening in the webinars i think all from first to this webinar i think interesting uh, interactions almost the same amount of time the presentation took the q and a always exceeded that shows the kind of interest the topic generated and uh, with that in this 
finally uh, thanks to the organizers of master class who are working as a team no each and every member of the uh, the the organizing team who has been working on this to make this the best webinar we have so finally wishing you all happy festival days especially dasara and vijay dashmi which is coming to tomo tomorrow day after so have happy holidays so thank you very much thank you rajiv and all of you for the excellent support i got and uh, you know i got all the credit but you did all the <laughs> work to shape it up thank you so much i thoroughly enjoyed thank you for all of those, those of you who asked questions and uh, you know the questions are which actually kind of i as a teacher i always tell my students to ask questions because i tell them i i learn through your questions yeah thank you so much for all the questions thank you once again thank you very much